Hello, I'm Elian St. Hilaire, and in this video we're going to take a look at KVM in detail. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to an Intel AMT machine. Now, uh, hardware KVM is a feature. Uh, first of all, KVM stands for Keyboard um, Mouse and Video. KVM, Keyboard Video Mouse. And it started with AMT 6.0. So when I use AMT Commander here and I connect, you will see the AMT version that I'm using right here. And I'm using version 10 in this case, but anything above 6 will work. And so I'm going to go to Remote Desktop and hit Connect. And you'll see the Remote Desktop here pop up. Now, a few things to note about KVM. First of all, the the uh, image here is actually grabbed directly from the hardware, the Intel graphics in hardware. So if you have discrete graphics, so if you have an add-on graphics card, then this feature will not work. You'll see a blank black screen. But if you are using Intel graphics, then the uh, basically AMT goes and fetches the uh, Intel graphics image straight from the uh, buffer and compresses it and sends it over the network here. Um, the other thing to note is that Intel AMT makes it look like there's a USB mouse and keyboard that are connected and the OS has to respond to that. So obviously if, if you have an, an, an OS that does not respond to uh, the new keyboard and mouse being plugged in, and then it, you know the keyboard and mouse won't work over KVM. So th that's uh, a typical question that I'm asked when the mouse or keyboard doesn't work. Just check your OS to make sure that uh, that, wor that works. Okay. Uh, by the way, KVM in Mesh Commander, uh, you know it's um, the screen here will always try to fit within the screen boundaries of your viewer. Uh, so that means that obviously if the screen is very high resolution on the other side, then the, it will be sent in full resolution over to your side and then scaled down to fit this HTML5 canvas. So that's how that works. Um, so here I'm gonna stretch it out as much as I can to fit the screen. Um, another thing you can do is there's a full button here. You can click full and it goes and grabs you know as much of the screen as possible or you can click normal and go back. Um, there's uh, the power state here and you'll notice that there's a red bar on the top. Occasionally what happens is that the power state gets pulled again. And so that's what you show it shows power state on here. But if the machine is remotely uh, sleeping or hibernating or soft off, you'll see that here and you'll be able to do power actions right there. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this machine to BIOS and say OK. And I use the power actions button here to do that. And I'm going to click OK here. And you're going to see the machine boot back up and boot into, um, into the BIOS. And here I'm using a visual BIOS so you, you, see, um, you see that remotely and I can control it. So uh, this is something that you really can't do on a normal KVM device. You know, there's just no way you could do that, uh, you know, and still have control over the machine. Normal uh, software remote control solutions, th at that point, they'll say just computer disconnected. But with AMT, uh, the, the hardware uh, and the network stack inside the hardware allows us to keep connection and keep the remote desktop working, even if uh, the OS is no longer working. So I'm going to go ahead and say power action and I'm going to reset. I'm just going to do a normal reset now and boot back into Windows. And so now we're going to take a look at other, other features of the viewer. One of them is the save button. This allows you to save a screenshot. So I'm going to hit save here and, and just go ahead and say uh, save and open inside the default viewer. And you'll see the default viewer now has this JPEG picture of the screen. And I'll start again. I'll do it again here. Boom. And so, um, so this is useful if you want to take just a, a JPEG screenshot of the current screen for, you know, maybe support usage or whatever. You just hit the save button there. Um, we'll talk about either in a different uh, video. I do want to take a look at settings. And so in settings, there's uh, the image encoding. AMT supports a few I image encoding and um, color uh, you know, depth configuration. So AMT supports 8 or 16-bit color depth. 
and two types of encoding. It supports RLE or RAW. So if I go to uh, RAW 16 and say OK, then uh, the, the viewer will disconnect and reconnect into that mode. And you'll see that you know, it's, it's slower and there's significantly amount of more data that's being sent. So the tiles are being sent, only the tiles that have changed are, are sent, but uh, in raw mode, obviously you, you, you're not compressing anything, so you're getting a, a lot more data. I'm gonna do raw 8-bit per pixel, and so here you see the color is, um, is much less, because obviously we're just using 8-bit per pixel, but uh, we double the speed, basically, going from 16 to 8-bit just cuts the the size by roughly half, half. Then there's RLE mode, uh, RLE 16. This is you know much faster. This is what I recommend. And also there's RLE 8 if you want to have uh, the fastest possible experience at the cost of uh, of color depth. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and go back into uh, RLE 16, which is the recommended one. I, I would recommend. And then I'm going to take a look at another feature in settings. So uh, first of all, the uh, you can show the local mouse cursor. If you don't do that and say OK, then you see only the remote mouse cursor. And it lags a little bit, but it's still usable. Um, but you, And as soon as you leave the canvas, the, the local cursor now shows up. But as long as you're on the canvas, the local cursor is now gone. Um, so that's sometimes useful. And then show control to delete, that's at the bottom left here. Uh, if you don't do this, you know, it hides it. And the only reason you would want to hide that is if, you, um, uh, if you're not working on an OS uh, that, does, that has that, you know, control to delete that does, doesn't work or doesn't use anything, then you can hide that button. Now, the other interesting feature we have is the focus tool. You go to settings and you say show focus tool. And then there's this button, Focus All, and you can click it to toggle to Small Focus, Large Focus, or All. Uh, the default is All, but if you say, for example, Large Focus, you see this box around the, around the screen. And here I'll have to correct something. But, um, and so what happens is that only the part of the screen insta inside that red box gets updated. And so if I go to Small, then the box is much smaller, and you see only a part of the box. And then when you let go of the mouse, you can kind of scroll through to reveal the screen. Now, this is useful if you uh, are in a situation where you have low bandwidth and you're only wanting to you know, deal with a little part of the screen at once, or situations where you have a part of the screen that's playing some video or something, and so that video is kind of hogging the, the KVM, uh, protocol, and you're you just going to want to operate on other part of the screen while the video is playing, then then this focus tool uh, is really useful. So that's kind of a, a nice option we have here. Otherwise, you just go back to uh, all focus anytime you want, and you go back to uh, you know the full update. Now, in addition to that, we have two buttons here: the rotate right and rotate left, and you can just kind of pivot the screen full 360 degrees. This is useful if you're using digital signs or something. And you'll notice that the cursor, the local cursor also gets pivoted. So, you, you know, it kind of works correctly. So this is super useful if you're in a situation where um, the screen is pivoted and you, um, and you need to still take control of it. So that's it. That's uh, the hardware KVM viewer inside Mesh Commander. Uh, hope you like it.